this is gonna go on YouTube, but uh, I haven't made a tier list for the Paradox Pokemon. I ranked them individually, uh, like as just general Pokemon, but I actually haven't like gone through each one and ranked them in terms of viability. I like talked about them, but I never actually ranked them. So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, here, let me go full screen. Oh, that's not it. So yeah, so today we're gonna rank all the Paradox Pokemon from most viable to least viable and explain my thoughts behind this. Um, but it's gonna be just a very chill video. Uh, obviously you can give your thoughts in the live stream if you're watching this live, but if you're watching it on YouTube, you know, leave your thoughts in the comment section down below and leave a like and subscribe. But let's get into it. Let's just let's just jump right into it. <clears throat> so we got a uh, Brute Bonnet. Now, Brute Bonnet's pretty interesting. Let me pull this up. Let me pull this up for you guys real quick. Not the Dunsparce, Brute Bonnet. So Brute Bonnet is a really cool Pokemon. Um, stats wise, it's like really, really good. I, I don't know how else to describe it. It has like a bad ability, but everything else about it is like good. So comparing it to Amoongus, which it arguably is comparable to, uh, and it's funny that it, it's only arguable, it's not like direct. Uh, so Brute Bonnet is a Pokemon with 111 HP, you know, slightly less than Amoongus. Um, but it's like actual defensive stats are slightly higher, you know, 99, 99, where Amoongus has 70 and 80. So, uh, you know, Brute Bonnet ends up being bulkier, but that's only to make up for a worse defensive typing. Like if you're grass and dark, <laughs> good luck switching in on a U-turn, good luck switching in on a flamethrower, uh, close combat. There are very few things that this Pokemon can switch in on. That being said, uh, I feel like you don't run it bulky at all. I actually, funny enough, I think you run it fast because 55, while it does work under Trick Room, you can actually do this. You can literally run like adamant max speed. And that's a fine Pokemon. Like that's actually a fine Pokemon because Protosynthesis will give it a boost uh, in the sun or if you're holding a booster energy, which honestly I recommend for this guy. Uh, and at 107 speed, you actually outspeed a lot of things. Obviously you can run Jolly if you want, um, but you only hit 117. It's not that big of a difference. So admin's better, uh, but you run like Seed Bomb or Bullet Seed if you're crazy. Uh, Sucker Punch, Spore, and protect and then you're good i honestly think i think that rage powder isn't a good item for this guy but yeah um this is really scary because if we actually jump into the damage calc let me get the damage calc open and we look at a pokemon it's gonna have to deal with right fluttermane and we open up a brute bonnet give this guy max attack adamant sucker punch versus like a Let's do like Timid, because that's gonna be more popular, I think. Uh, timid, max special attack, four HP, or actually four defense is probably gonna be more common here. You can see your Sucker Punch is doing like 93% maximum, 78% minimum, uh, and that's before the Protosynthesis boost. Like this is a really strong Pokemon. So if we activate Protosynthesis, if we turn on the sun, um, yeah, here. Now we know that Sucker Punch is a guaranteed one shot. With that in mind, you can actually decrease the attack stat a little bit. Yeah. Decrease the attack stat to like 220. And now you get a little bit more bulk out of it. Just like throw there or whatever. Uh, so that's really cool. I actually think Brubonnet's like a solid A tier in my opinion. I don't think it's S tier, but it's definitely like at the top of all of them. Uh, and a lot of people will be like, nah, it's bad. It's it's so weak to a lot of things, but 107 under Tailwind outspeeds Dragapult. Yeah, whoever said that in chat, yeah, that's why you want to hit 107. And it doesn't have Regenerator, which is a big nerf to it. But I think like in comparison to Amoongus, Amoongus you want for like defensive teams, teams that will like operate under Trick Room. Brute Bonnet, funny enough, goes crazy on like Tailwind Murkrow teams with like Gold Ango. So yeah, that's my thoughts on that guy. Fluttermane, that's 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 an S. That's an S. Okay, so here's the deal with Fluttermane. It's a crazy Pokemon. Uh, remember how I like opened it up here and I said Timid's gonna be better? Uh, yeah, well, Timid Moonblast from this guy. Keep in mind, this is versus like a Brute Bonnet, right? Let's give it like four HP if they're running like the max attack spread. Um, and we give this guy Moonblast. That's a one shot on Brute Bonnet. And most of them aren't gonna be running a lot of HP. If they run max HP, it's still a one shot on Brute Bonnet. Timid. Timid Fluttermane is one shotting Brute Bonnet with Protosynthesis speed. Cause keep in mind, we're timid. Look at this. What are we boosting? We're boosting our, our, uh, our, our thing, right? Like, let's say we switch to Modest. Bam. Now, <laughs> we do even more. 
That's crazy, right? So even a Pokemon with 111 HP and 99 special defense isn't taking a Timid Moonblast from Fluttermane. It's a very strong Pokemon. Like, it's it's kind of crazy just how strong this thing can be. Um, it also, like, it, I think the only things that, like, seriously beat this thing are going to be, like, priority moves. Like, like I said, Sucker Punch on Brute Bonnet's going to be your best friend, but that isn't going to help you out if they tear a fairy, because now you're only doing half. Now you're doing, like, 50%. Uh, yeah, see? Sucker Punch. Oh, wait, that's Terra Ghost. Terra Fairy. Yeah, if they tear a fairy, now it's like you're just barely picking up a KO. Oh, wait, that's... Hold on. There you go. Yeah, now you're just barely picking up a 2 at KO. So you have to, like, calc to live the hit now. So you have to do, like... Oh, you know, let's say that they're Terra... Well, now you just don't even live the hit. Yeah, no, like, that's, like, a really rough thing for it. Other ways to check Fluttermane. Which, by the way, the way that most Fluttermane are going to be rammed this season are going to be, like... Um... Uh, Booster Energy, Timid, Max Max, Icy Wind, Dazzling Gleam or Moonblast, but like Protect, Shadow Ball, and then a Fairy move. I'm a big fan of Dazzling Gleam for um, like general sets, but I think Moonblast is also quite good. I just like the spread damage. Actually, for me, it's like Moonblast I'll run if I have Icy Wind, but if I'm running, uh, if I'm running a uh, Calm Mind. I'll actually switch this out for Dazzling Gleam. And that lets me get, like, the speed boost and also, like, Calm Mind, Terra Fairy, and, like, pick up KOs. It's a really cool Pokemon. Like, checks to it are going to include, like, Steel types, obviously. Steel types can take on this thing, but uh, it also gets access to Mystical Fire. So keep that in mind. But Steel Pokemon that beat it. Uh, I think King Gambit's going to be really good. Corviknight does decent into it because uh, it's, like, going to be able to wall it out pretty well. Golden Go, you have to be, like... Cause Barry, like you can't even run Choice Scarf because this guy has like a Choice Scarf that lets it switch moves effectively. Um, other Steel types that beat it. Uh, I mentioned King Gambit. Technically Reverum, but just barely. Uh, Tinkaton, technically, but it's going to be like Scizor and Corviknight, Golden Go to an extent, and like King Gambit. Those are like the four you're going to be able to get away with. As far as ghost types that beat it, that's where things get rough, right? That's where things get really rough. Because what, what beats this thing? Yeah, like Annihilate, if it like Terra Fires, can eat a hit and like Rage Fist it. Uh, but even that's like not super reliable. Dragapult has to run Scarf to outspeed the Timid variant if they're running a uh, Booster Energy. Gengar only beats it if it's Focus Sash. Mimikyu technically always beats it, I think, um, if you play your cards right. And Skeledurge has to Terra to not get one shot. Uh, and even then, it has to hit it with a with a special move, so it's pretty unlikely to actually KO it because it has really good special defense. So, this is a really crazy Pokemon, and I didn't even mention that like you can run like the Booster Energy modest set and then just pick up KOs immediately because you have a Life Orb. But honestly, if you're gonna run Booster Energy uh, modest, just go ahead and run Life Orb instead. Like it's it it doesn't go away when you switch, and this thing's frail enough that it doesn't really make a difference. You're already a Glass Cannon. That's my that's like my uh, my opinion though. You run Booster Energy on Timmy, you run Life Orb on modest. But yeah, or even just like Life Orb Timid, like that's also an option. <laughs> that's also an option. So that's definitely an S tier. I think it has really limited ways to beat it. Uh, yeah, Bullet Punch, Scizor, other like Bullet Punch priority Pokemon. Like if we just look at Pokemon that get Bullet Punch, obviously these Pokemon will be able to uh, Terra Steel. So, you know, Metacham, Lucara, Hariyama, Toxicroak. There, there are options. I actually really liked uh, Terra Steel Hariyama for a while. I think it's actually really good, but yeah. Limited ways to beat it. Uh, Shadow Sneak Pokemon technically can do it. Yeah, th those are pretty limited too. Those are also pretty limited. What about Sucker Punch? Because Sucker Punch is neutral, but if they Terra Fairy, it's not. Yeah, you're you're super limited on ways to beat this guy. Uh, Meowskarada technically can like Flower Trick into Sucker Punch, and that's always safe, but you have to be Sash. So, yeah, definitely an S tier. So, this guy... Great Tusk. Uh, a lot of people watched my first impressions video and they were from uh, the OU side of things and they were like, oh, Great Tusk is amazing in OU, so obviously it's going to be great in VGC. While that's the case for like Fluttermane, uh, Great Tusk suffers from I have no special defense syndrome and I'm also not particularly fast syndrome. While in like singles, it's great for, shout out singles, big respect on you guys. Uh, while it's great for like Stealth Rock and like Rapid Spin stuff, those tools don't matter in VGC. You're almost never going to see them unless you face off like against a Glamora. So for the most part, it's going to be running like Headlong Rush, Close Combat, uh, 
I don't know, like Ice Spitter Knockoff? Like, that's like the only set I could see, and you're gonna want to run like Assault Vest. And probably just like Jolly. Actually, probably like Adamant, now that I think about it. Because you hit 107 naturally. You could try to hit like 137 and now you outspeed Golden Go. And now you can do this. Hold on. Wavy bar stat spread optimal. Wavy bars. <laughs> yeah, like you could run that and you like technically beat Golden Go, I think. But uh, it's it's still like super rough, you know. Uh, could you see a Jack pack on it at all? On what Pokemon? But yeah, no, uh, Great Tusk. It's it's going to be very mid. Obviously, you do have Protosynthesis with, you know, Torkoal, which helps it out quite a bit. Uh, and you do have access to Booster Energy. But Booster Energy, I'm pretty sure on this guy, is always going to boost attack, even if you're running Jolly. Because it, it's like a 50, it's a 50 point difference, right? Yeah, 150, 183. Even if I, like, get rid of this and put it all here, 152. What if you run, like... Zero attack EVs. Oh, you have to run Timid. Look, if you want booster energy to boost your speed, this is the set, guys. This is the set. One IV. Bam. Choice Scarf. Honestly, Choice Scarf isn't bad either, the more I think about it. That could be a decent item. Could be a decent item on it. Uh, Yeah, because do you hit 143? No, you hit 139, so you have to run Jolly Scarf. No, no, decent item. Uh, I would say that that's going to go in, like, C tier. Maybe B tier. I don't know. We'll see what fills out. All right. So I have to disclose this, right? A lot of people will will skip to the end of the video and look at the rankings and then complain and not watch the actual video. And a lot of people will watch the entire video, but sort of not get how I rank things. And keep in mind that in VGC, almost anything is usable, right? If you fall within B or C tier, that means that I have the utmost confidence that this Pokemon can work in VGC and may even top cut a tournament, right? D is where I'm like, you're getting a little bit creative here and not in the good way, in the way where you're just kind of coping with a bad Pokemon. So I'm going to throw him actually in B tier because I think it's not quite C because Choice Scarf does seem very threatening. Uh, KC VGC, thanks for the raid. So yeah, that's going to be a B. I hope the music isn't too loud or too quiet. Let me know if it is, I'll fix it. All right, um, next Pokemon. Oh, Iron Bundle. Iron Bundle, yeah, I, D tier is cooking, or is coping, not cooking. C tier is cooking, D tier is coping. That's, that's how we know. Uh, but yeah, so Iron Bundle is, I would argue, I hate facing Iron Bundle more than anything in this format. I hate facing Iron Bundle more than anything in this game. And that's because this Pokemon feels so inconsistent for the opponents. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna luck out or what, and sometimes it comes down to it. It's the sort of Pokemon that gives you hope. Uh, you always have hope. So the reason is, uh, its best water move is Hydro Pump, 80 accuracy. Its best ice move is technically Blizzard, and it could run Ice Beam, but it's never going to run either of those things. It's going to always go for Freeze Dry, uh, because Freeze Dry allows it to hit things like Pelipper, uh, to hit things like just water types in general, like you hit like Rotom now. So that's really good. Uh, it's also just like a really fast Pokemon. So you run like Icy Wind, and Booster Energy, and Protect. So yeah, uh, yeah, Booster Energy, Protect. Sorry, I was like breathing in really hard because I'm congested. And you always run Timid, and you do this, right? So this gives you a speed boost. This gives you a speed boost. Uh, and now you're one point... Well, you're already one point faster than Fluttermane. But after the 1.5, you're a couple more points faster than Fluttermane. Because uh, Fluttermane 205, you 206. You're like, what, two points faster than Fluttermane after that multiplier? I don't know. I don't want to do math. I don't want to do math. Uh, point is, you're faster. So you get to Icy Wind it, and what people tend to do with this guy, at least in like early early metagame I saw this, people would pair it with like Dragapult, and they would just go for like Icy Wind, Shadow Ball, and just annihilate Fluttermane leads. This guy is basically your new Regieleki. This is our new Regieleki. Uh, so what he's going to do is he's going to freeze dry the things that you think switch in on uh, the ice move, and... He's going to miss Hydro Pump on your fire types and then land it when you need him not to. Uh, and it's just like a really solid Pokemon. It fits on 
a number of archetypes, a Bombasso does great next to it because this guy actually doesn't have bad defense, right? He's an ice type. So he gets a boost from the snow. He has a 50% higher defense stat. And with low HP, boosting that high 114 defense actually makes him decently bulky on that side to the point where it can eat like a close combat from uh, some Pokemon. Uh, and it also benefits from rain. Why does it benefit from rain? Because rain is hyper offense. Hold on, why did I type that in? Drizzle, faux shizzle. Uh, yeah, rain is hyper offense, and this thing is, it beats Palafin, is the way I'm gonna, like, explain it. You use Iron Bundle like a rain abuser, but it's, like, an alternate to Palafin, because you freeze-dry Palafin and it goes down, and you, like, Hydro Pump everything else. The only thing is you don't want to always run that, because it's, like, inconsistent, like I said. It's 80 accuracy. So it's, it's a really scary Pokemon, but yeah. Uh, you misspelled Paradox with a Z? Hold on, let me see. Yeah. Is this an all paradox team? No, this is a this is a tier list. We're doing a tier list. So I'm gonna actually throw it in A tier. It's the only reason it's not S is because uh Hydro Pump. I'm gonna be honest. That's the only reason it's not S. Alright, Iron Hands. I'll be honest with you guys. I am an Iron Hands denier. I am straight up an Iron Hands denier. I deny the love and grace of Iron Hands. I don't think it's as good as people give it credit. Um, well, it is as good as people give it credit, but I don't think that it's, like, actually a replacement for Hariyama. And the distinction that you have to make here is that Hariyama has support tools, and it has knockoff. Like, it has tools that Iron Hands doesn't. Iron Hands is a, I'm going to hit you, Pokemon. You're going to hit things hard. Uh, and you have to make the decision between a Cork Drive to give you basically a, a, a Life Orb boost, or an Assault Vest. And for the most part, you're gonna run like Assault Vest on this guy. And he's gonna be like, Fake Out, Close Combat, or Drain Punch. You could actually, Drain Punch might be a little bit better. Uh, Wild Charge, and I don't know. what which, Fire Punch, or Ice Punch. Either one, Ice Punch is probably better. And you just like, I don't have like a spread for him right now, but like typically you'll like max out that attack. Make it like a Brave Pokemon. Zero Speed. Uh, you're Brave. Give it, like, a decent amount of special defense. And then, like, you end up having, like, a wavy bar spread. You have wavy bars, generally. And those four EVs aren't actually wasted. It's just that they can't physically go anywhere. Because uh, you have zero speed IVs. And you don't want to put them anywhere. Like, you put them in the special attack, but they're not going to work. But yeah. Most Iron Hands are built like this. But if you want to be lazy, you could just do, like, that. You know, don't steal that spread directly. It's not particular. It's literally just me giving an example of what the spread looks like. Uh, but Iron Hands has a couple of things, right? So Iron Hands technically beats Iron Bundle with an Assault Vest. You just Drain Punch it and it goes down. Or you Close Combat it and it goes down. Or you like Wild Charge it and it goes down. Technically, that is an answer. Uh, but keep in mind that you're not taking like two Terra Water Hydro Pumps. It, you're just not. Actually, let's throw that in the damage calculator. Iron Bundle. 252. We're going to assume Timid. And we'll Terra... Terra Water water hydro pump and we'll go with like iron hands let's just do like the max max spread sure assault vest yeah so wait why is that doing so little oh the sun is up yeah, so you can see that here, Terra Water. Oh wait, that is a roll. Never mind. Never mind. He actually just does really good into him. How much does the Drain Punch do? Pretty sure it's a one shot. No, it's like a two shot. Yeah, close combat probably one shots though. Ooh, not even. Why is this guy so fat? Why is he actually so fat? What the hell? I don't want to live in a world. Oh wait, that's because. Never mind, never mind, I forgot he was Terra Water. Yeah, Drain Punch one shots. I was gonna say that doesn't make sense. Yeah, okay, so Drain Punch will one shot. You win this interaction every time. Okay, so that's really good. Um, I'll put Iron Hands at like A because of that. Like, because it does well into everything. Obviously, it doesn't want to take super effective special attacks. Like, replace that with like a Flutter Main and things go a little bit different. Granted, the Assault Vest does give you like really good special defense, obviously, but like, let's just do like Timid Flutter Main, right? And give it like Moonblast. And we'll give you Wild Charge. Yeah. Wild Charge one shot. 
but even then, you know, very, if you have any like chip on you, you're like struggling. And also it's like decently slow. So it's really easy to follow up on Iron Hands. So it depends on the matchup. You have to play it smart, but it's definitely like a very good Pokemon. I don't think it's S, but it's certainly an A. Um, and that's just because like, while it like doesn't beat, like, while it doesn't lose to like um, a lot of the other Paradox Pokemon, it does lose to other like good Pokemon in the metagame. If we just take a look at like Picolytics, right? And the Pokedex, if it would load. Series two updated? No, we can look at series one, but uh, you know, Annihilate does very well into it. Uh, Hydreigon does pretty decent into it. Like you can change your Terra type. Uh, Armorugian and Didi do well into it. If it gets burnt, that's the biggest thing for this guy. Like if he gets burnt, he's just done. So yeah, uh, those are the big issues of it. Uh, it's very slow. It needs Trick Room to function a lot of the time. Uh, otherwise it just gets doubled up on. All right, let's clear out our team builder and continue. So. Next up is Iron Jugulus, and I would argue that Iron Jugulus is actually probably either the worst or the second worst uh, Paradox Pokemon, and here's why. It's a, it's a Dark and Flying type, right? And it's going to try to share a similar niche to, a similar niche to Hydreigon, uh, and while this guy gets Tailwind and this guy gets Dark Pulse... And this guy gets Tailwind. And this guy gets Dark Pulse. Uh, this guy has to run Hurricane for its, like, best stab move. And this guy gets to run Draco Meteor. You can see the clear distinction in viability. 70 accuracy, 110 base power move. 130 uh, base power, 90 accuracy. 125 special attack, 122 special attack. Yeah, this one's faster. Uh, but it's going to struggle to really, like, find a position where it goes crazy because that 122 while it is nice with like a 108 uh speed it's it's not picking up ko's like it has to be run on rain and like that's it so the way that i would recommend running this guy is probably going to be like probably like terra flying to be honest just to like max out the damage you can get so while hydrogon doesn't want to be like its base typing this guy probably does want to be its base typing so it does get to benefit from like the uh the uh, adaptability boost so if we go with like a terra flying set right uh, you get Hurricane, and then, like, for your final move, I suppose you could run, like, Earth Power and just slap, like, a Life Orb onto it. Or, I think that this guy... Oh, it's really close, actually. Are you able to run Timid and still get a special attack boost? No. So, yeah, like, Timid Life Orb is trying to be, like, the best option for it. You don't even use, like, the Cork Drive, really. Um, but if you want to use, like, Cork Drive, I suppose that's fine. Uh, a lot of the future forms have to run, like, Booster Energy to get value out of them. Uh, because Pink Kirchen isn't the best Pokemon, but yeah. Uh, also, the biggest thing with this guy is he also doesn't get Nasty Plots. That's, like, really bad. Uh, generally speaking, I don't think that you want to run Iron Jugulus. Uh, it, you have to run it on Rain. And, and even then, if you're running it on Rain, you're, like, running it next to a Pelipper, which already does what this guy does, just, like, weaker, but it also sets up the Rain. So then you're, like, Rock Slide food. So I'm going to put him in, like... I don't think there are any D tiers. I think that this guy's our first C, you know? Okay, Iron Moth. Iron Moth. So, this is another future Pokemon. Obviously, the future forms benefit from Pink Kirchen and not Torkoal, but this one wishes it benefited from Torkoal because a fire type with Cork Drive would be crazy. That being said, you can just, uh, you can, like, just Terra Electric, I suppose, if you want to do something crazy like that, but yeah. So, here's the thing. It gets Heat Wave, but it also gets Fiery Dance. Um, those are both good options. I don't think you want to run both because you don't want to. You want coverage on this guy, right? Like to to make the most of this Pokemon, you need coverage, and it gets really good coverage. But yeah, you you don't want to run like both of these moves, so it's kind of a hard decision. Um, it doesn't get Quiver Dance, which is a really big downgrade from Volcarona, uh, but it is faster than it than it, and it does hit harder. Because what was Volcarona's special attack again? 135, yeah. Iron Moth is a little bit stronger in that sense. So, uh, I believe this guy, if you run Timid, you still get the Life Orb. So, let me see. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, yeah, you do. You still get, like, a Life Orb boost off of this. So, while you could do that, I would actually just recommend running the regular Life Orb because it's more consistent. Um, but if you want, you could also decrease your special attack a bit to like that. And that grants you a little bit more bulk. So you could do something like, I don't know, you could do like a spread like this, right? 
And then you run like Heat Wave, Energy Ball. You run like Terra Grass on this guy every time, in my opinion. Um, because it just lets it like take it like an earthquake from Garchomp and stuff. Uh Dazzling Gleam and while Sludge, it, so Sludge Bomb would have been great, right? It doesn't get it. It has to run Sludge Wave, which is really bad because it hits its partner. So if you run it next to a Steel type, that isn't that bad. Uh, but I think you actually just forego the poison altogether and find like a different move to put on there. Honestly, like, <clears throat> sorry. Excuse me. Honestly, you have options. Uh, Helping Hand's like decent. I don't know if it gets Tailwind. It doesn't get Tailwind, which kind of sucks. But I think that you do want to like speed boost this guy more than anything. Uh... You can do Struggle Bug if you're crazy. Metal Sound if you're crazier. Yeah, no, this one's actually kind of a hard one. Acid Spray could be kind of... Acid Spray could be kind of heat if you combo into something. Honestly, honestly, that's not that bad. That's not that bad, but you know. You would want to do something like this, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah. Protect is also good. Yeah, if you want to run Protect, that's a thing. But I think that uh, coverage is generally like decent on this guy. But yeah, uh, those are my thoughts on Iron Moth. I think it's going to be like a solid B tier. Uh, it's definitely not on par with the A tiers. Like, I can tell you that much. All right, uh, are we at Iron Thorns? So this one, this one puzzles me, man. I don't know what they were thinking here. Rock and Electric isn't bad offensively. Defensively, you're struggling here. Like, when's the last time you saw an Alolan Golem do anything, right? When's the last time you saw that? Like, well, it hasn't been in like any games, but... You get my point, right? Even in VGC 17, it was questionable. So, he has good stats. If we compare him to Tyranitar, they're actually pretty similar. They both have 100 HP. The only thing that really changes is Iron Thorns is faster, and Tyranitar is bulkier on the special defensive side, and Iron Thorns has less special attack. So, also, Iron Thorns doesn't get Sandstorm, which kind of sucks. Uh, ironically making it a decent partner for Tyranitar if you want to run like Terra Flying on this guy to not get one shot. Uh, but yeah, uh, kind of a weird Pokemon. I don't believe it gets Dragon Dance. Oh, it does get Dragon Dance. All right. So I guess that a way that you could, you could get away with this guy, um, is can he hit 143? No, he doesn't hit the magic number. So that means you have to hit like, it doesn't even hit like 137 to outspeed Golden Go, which is really bad. So you could do like Adamant 107. And like go for two. And do something like this, right? Boost your energy, boost your attack, dragon dance, rock, not rock blast, rock slide. Rock slide. Uh, it gets wild charge, but I think thunder punch might be better. Eh, yeah, you're setting up, so like thunder punch might actually be better. Because it's very unlikely you're going to be able to set up and click like wild charge and like get away with it uh like you're gonna take too much recoil and then actually th i think you probably want to run like terra blast and like just go terra flying yeah or terra grass like obviously terra grass is always really good for these pokemon that are weak to ground uh because it also lets you beat like well it already beats water types and it already beats flying types so yeah no i guess yeah you, you just run like terra flying because that lets you beat uh that lets you beat grass types. Yeah. Uh I don't think it's reliable though. I think this guy is going to go in C tier though. It seems extremely unreliable. Iron treads. Oh, notably, this guy does benefit from pink urchin because it's an electric type and it gets cork drive, so it gets like it gets to double dip a little bit. Uh but it's still not great, right? Like you don't want to you don't want to like have to use pink urchin which is also weak to ground. Like it's it's going to be rough for you then. Iron Treads. This Pokemon has 106 speed, 112 attack, 120 defense. It's, in my opinion, it's another Assault Vest Pokemon. I actually don't think that you actually run the booster energy because its attack stat isn't like nearly as high as uh, Great Tusk. But you could literally just do this. Actually, maybe you do run booster energy. You could do that. Um, I think Assault Vest would be better, but if you want to run Booster Energy, now you outspeed, like, whatever you need to. You could do something like this. Uh, you probably want to invest more in Special Defense, but does it get Ice Spinner? It does get Ice Spinner. Okay, that's kind of cool. You can hit Dragapult, knock off. Uh, it doesn't get Headlong Rush, right? It, it just gets, like, Earthquake. Earthquake. Iron Head or, like, Protect. And you would drop one of these, probably like Ice Spinner, if anything, for like Protect. 
But even then, like... Oh, wait, never mind. You're not booster energy. Never mind. That's stupid. I'm, I'm stupid. I forgot. No, you can't do that because your attack stat's too high. What am I saying? Even if you go like Jolly. Uh, you could... Hold on. Let's see if you can pull this off. 143. No, we're getting, we're getting too crazy. We're getting too crazy with this. This is way, way worse. Way worse than I thought it would be. Okay. So you would have to do like this. Congratulations, you've built an iron treads in the worst possible way. Yeah, this guy wants assault vest. Yeah, that's the only way you're gonna get away with it. Um just like Adam and Assault Vest spread. I don't really see any way to use this guy too great. I think he's gonna go. I think he's gonna be another C tier. It, it like loses to a lot of common things. The only thing it really beats is like this fairy type mon, you know? It's just yeah, it is just fast body press, isn't it? But even then, like you're not a fighting type. Like you wish you were you wish you had the fighting type. But ground steel obviously isn't bad. Maybe you can find a place on like sand teams, but nah, it just it seems very it seems very underwhelming in my opinion. Okay, uh, Iron Valiant. I think it's gonna be another A tier for me. I used to be an Iron Valiant denier, uh, but after facing this set, after facing Booster Energy Iron Valiant, Timid, Max Speed, Max Special Attack. Yeah, hold on. If you were to run Jolly. Yeah, if you run Jolly, you still speed boost. All right. So Timid is like better in my opinion because you have a better special move pool. You have access to Moonblast, which is a crazy move. Uh, oh, I really want to enter that tournament. Are we almost done? We're not We're not close enough. All right, no, I'm not going to enter that tournament. So you get like Moonblast, you get Aura Sphere. Uh, you also get access to like a bunch of cool moves like Destiny Bond. Does it get Will-O-Wisp? It doesn't get Will-O-Wisp, that would have been really cool. Uh, but like Destiny Bond is really nice uh, and also... Icy Wind, like it's like a good speed control Pokemon. You could even run like a mixed attacker if you really wanted to, or like Taunt. It gets like so many tools. Wide Guard, it basically gets like every tool that you want. But like you could do like a mixed attacker, right? Like you could do like Hasty. Actually, uh, I think Naive is better technically because you don't, you take less from like Fake Out then. And you could do like this, right? You could do like Moonblast, Aura Sphere. You, could do, you get really crazy with this actually the more I think about it. The more I think about it, you get really crazy with it. So, I guess you would want a Moonblast, like, um, what is it called? Pokemon with, like, lower special defense stats, and, like, Moonblast is just generally better than Spirit Break, because Spirit Break's, like, a really low power move. So you could, like, optimize to just do more damage to, like, those Pokemon. Like, it's really good into stuff like, um, what is it called? I just talked about them. Iron Hands. Like, Iron Hands obviously doesn't want to take a Moonblast. It would rather take uh, a Spirit Break than a Moonblast, right? So you could optimize it like this, right? You could run like, like this spread, doesn't seem that bad. Uh, but I don't know how much attack you would want. You would want to like make sure that you one shot like King Gambit with close combat. And I think that's all you really need. And like that isn't hard to do. Or even like maybe just like some notable like steel types, depending on what's popular. Um, I guess a good benchmark would be like Terra Steel Hydreigon. No, not the Assault Vest spread. The Max Max spread. This is a good benchmark. So we are Iron Valiant. Naive. Close combat. That takes no investment. That takes literally no investment. Yeah. I don't know then. Like, I, I feel like you want close combat still because Aura Sphere is really underwhelming. But I don't know what you would smack with it off the top of my head. Let's see. I guess Tyranitar, because Tyranitar eats um an Aura Sphere for sure, because gets it gets that special defense boost. Um, is that really it? Is that like the only reason you would run it? I don't know. If you guys can think of anything, let me know. Yeah, I think that Neutral Nature is going to be the reason you you would do that, because I do think that like Shadow Sneak is like really good on this guy too, especially for beating um what is it called for beating Fluttermane? Like you can calc to like two shot with Shadow Sneak. I'm fairly certain. Fluttermane has awful defense. Yeah, that's like a really easy benchmark to hit. Yeah, so like 60 would be good. 
Yeah, I think mixed attacker is going to be like standard, to be honest. And like with that speed, the Destiny Bond's basically guaranteed to take something with it. I like that quite a bit, actually. Terra Ghost wouldn't even be that bad the more I think about it because you avoid fake out now. Uh, but yeah, also like if you get intimidated, it's like whatever. I still have like a, a really strong moon blast. That's really cool. Like being able to work around those things is like really awesome. Uh, I'm going to put it in A tier, like maybe B tier, but I think like a low A tier. It's below all these guys, but like above these two. All right. Um, what's his name? Mr. Croissant. Uh, Roaring Moon. Roaring Moon. Dragon and Dark. Obviously, we have Hydreigon, which, despite the fact that, like, fairy types are going to be everywhere with the advent of Fluttermane running around, I still think that Roaring Moon is really good. Because it is going to be, like, it's going to be similar to Hydreigon, where, like, 60% of the time, you're going to Terra it. And it has a couple of good Terra types, right? Like, you can run Terra Flying, and this is, like, a really standard set. Booster Energy acrobatics uh let's get earthquake yeah like acrobatics earthquake dragon dance dragon dance crunch is like a set that you can run and you just run like jolly and you're like good right like you're good like you eat a hit from fluttermane if you like terra flying uh after a dragon dance you shut out speed because of the booster energy oh you could do this actually Actually, that's this is probably better. You can like optimize this guy to, to outspeed Fluttermane after a single Dragon Dance in, in Protosynthesis. You could also do it Terra Steel if you really wanted to. Uh, and then just run like Terra Blast over that. But I do think that the Terra Flying set's really good. So yeah, like this guy, he, he takes on a lot of things. Like it has really good coverage on the physical side. While Intimidate is kind of bad. Um, oh yeah, never mind. Not Crunch. Why was I thinking Crunch? Throat Chop. So the reason you want to run Throat Chop over Crunch. Uh, is because it beats Sylveon. Sylveon won't be able to go for Hyper Voice on you. They would have to be Terra Blast to beat you, which they sometimes are anyways. Uh, that's like not too common, not too uncommon. Uh, but also you beat like Snarl users to support your teammates. Uh, you can block Parting Shot from whatever's running Parting Shot right now. I guess Grim Snarl. Uh, Hyper Voice from like Ferrigraph is also really big. There's a lot of sound based moves in this metagame. You can even block Parish Song if you outspeed the Parish Song user. Like that blocks it because it's a sound move. So yeah. Uh, I'm going to throw it in A tier. Yeah, I'm going to throw an A tier. All right, last three. Let's uh, clear out our thing again. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Sandy Shocks. Sandy Shocks is the sort of Pokemon I don't know how to make heads or tails of. Uh, so it has really good special defense, and it's a steel type. And it's probably technically our only hard check to Fluttermane out of this entire dex. But I don't know how to run it. <laughs> like, it doesn't hit that hard. 120 in this metagame isn't, like, the highest special attack stat. Uh, I saw someone mention, like, Gravity Zap Cannon is technically a set. But you're not guaranteed to hit that. Which is a little bit underwhelming. Uh, but I guess, like, I don't know. Not light ball. You could do like this. Does he get electroweb? Man, if things got electroweb this gen, it would be so similar to make a move set for them. But like, reflect, light screen, thunderbolt, earth power. Why not? Like you can do that, right? Like that. That's like a fine set. Obviously, you wouldn't run like max special attack. Then you would like, you would calc to like live something and then like do the rest. I don't know. It's a weird Pokemon. It gets tons of cool tools, though. Obviously, you know, it could Volt Switch out. Volt Switch is also pretty good. Uh, Thunder Wave. Um, and if you like Terra Steel, you'll be able to just hard check Fluttermane uh, with like an Assault Vest set. Because I, I know that my buddy Michael had mentioned that, right? Where is it? Flash Cannon, yeah. You could do like this, right? Instead of running like ground coverage and then like Terra Steel. Yeah, and then, like, you're you're a really crazy Pokemon. Like, you get rid of that. Earth Power, uh, Power Gem, I guess, to beat, like, Fire types. Or, like, Flying types. We already beat Ice types, I guess? I don't know. This Pokemon tends to double dip on its coverage, doesn't it? Volt Switch, sure. Yeah, I guess that would be your set, and then you would just run, like, Timid. Whatever your, like, HP EVs are. This is the sort of Pokemon, like I said, I don't know how to use it. I, I don't know how to use it. It feels really weird, and I'm sure someone will, like, get it to work, but I'm going to put it in C tier for now. Screamtail. 
Okay, this guy, kind of crazy. Um, so Screamtail can do a couple of things. It can do the dual screen set that I had mentioned in the other one, right? Uh, but it arguably does it better. So you do like light screen, reflect. I like Encore and Flamethrower, and I like to run Terra Fire. Because Terra Fire allows you to uh, soak up steel hits really easily. So like that's one set that you could run. You just like outspeed base 105s, which... What is it? What is it to outspeed like Palmot? Let me think. So Garchomp is 170. One, two, three. Yeah, like 173. And then you can like do something like this. Like, I don't know. I don't know. You can do that if you want to. Um, Leftovers is also a phenomenal item on it if you don't want to run Light Clay. Uh, but in that case, I would actually recommend you run Trick Room on it. And a lot of you might be thinking, why would you run Fast Trick Room? This is actually not an uncommon thing to do. Uh, fast Trick Room is like something that you see on Pokemon to like feign a lead. So uh, you would see like Meow Scarada with Focus Sash Trick Room because like they're scared of it. They might like switch into something that can outspeed it or like Tailwind up and like KO it. And then you get on your Focus Sash and you like Trick Room up. Like that's a thing. Screamtail, I feel like Trick Room is going to be like the standard on it. So maybe you don't run as much speed on this set and you actually run like a bold set. And you can just do something like this, right? Uh, and you run like Trick Room, Encore, uh, Flamethrower, or Dazzling Gleam, obviously. Uh, and actually Parish Song is one of the biggest tools that this thing has. Parish Song's phenomenal for this guy. It also gets like other really cool support tools, Fake Tears, Helping Hand. It doesn't get Icy Wind, which kind of sucks, but I really wish it did. Uh, but yeah, Thunder Wave is like technically speed control. Howl is actually like a really cool move, but I prefer to use Howl on Pokemon that like also use their attack stat to get KOs. Sing is also really cool. You know, this is a crazy Pokemon. I actually think it's going to be like top tier, but I'm hesitant to put it uh, higher than A. I'm actually going to go ahead and put it like B, right? I think it's like really good, but I don't think it's like broken. I, I, I don't know. Maybe it is A. I'm going to put it at B for now. All right. And now, my personal favorite. I saved the best for last, even though it's going to be mid-tier. Uh, but Slitherwing. Posted up little moth. This guy's crazy. So I actually already have a spread for him. I actually have a whole team. Um, but Slitherwing is really cool. It has a couple of options. You can run like a bulk upset. But what I'm actually currently running is just boost your energy attack with a jolly uh, nature. Um... And I'm running Flame Charge with like Terra Fire because Terra Fire lets me resist fairy moves from uh, from Fluttermane. And then I just go for like Flame Charges into it and then I like outspeed it. And it has really good special defense, so it can eat those hits pretty easily. Uh, but also the first impression is like super threatening to a lot of Pokemon. Uh, Meow Scarada is one. Um, any Dark type really. Like if we actually just run the damage calc right here. Let me import it. Here. So Slitherwing... Like, just the initial first impression is really crazy. Let me actually do that Fluttermane calc really quick. I'm really curious. So, if I'm Terra Fire, like, Flame Charge. Jeez, what? Does it really do that much? Oh, my God. I, did, I, I didn't know it did that much. I really didn't think it would do that much. But a good Pokemon's a good Pokemon. You could obviously run Flame uh, uh, Flare Blitz there instead. But I like I like Flame Charge for the speed boosts. Uh, but, yeah, because it lets you, like, do other stuff. But, um... Obviously, versus like King Gambit, this is going to be a Pokemon you would like to have because you outspeed it. But like, let's say that you're under Trick Room and you're like scared of your range of Sucker Punch. Uh, first Impressions plus two priority. So First Impression will allow you to go before that. And you're with the with the booster energy. Oh, that isn't even with booster energy. Hold on. Let me go back. Hold on. Hold on. I got really excited over that. Uh, where are you? Oh, wait, no, I'm holding booster energy. That is counting it. Never mind. Does it count it? It should count it, right? Is it not counting it? Hold on. Surely it's counting it. What? Oh, no, the sun is active. Never mind. I'm stupid. I'm just stupid. I wasn't paying attention to my damage calc. Okay. Point is, we're booster energy, right? Uh, booster energy, first impression, does like almost 50%. So like under Trick Room, you're able to switch in on things and like get KOs. Like, uh, let's say that you're facing off versus an Armourouge, and while Armourouge does usually have Indeedee next to it, they don't always have that opportunity to keep the Indeedee on the field. That first impression with the attack boost is doing, like, 50%. You're basically, like, chunking everything. And versus Murkrow, it's also really cool. Because versus, like, Eevee Light Murkrow, your first impression is still doing 64%. And if they're actually 
just like straight up max defense, you're still doing 50%. So if you chip down the Murkrow and you get it in it at the right time, you can just prevent uh, Tailwind altogether. So that's very awesome. Other sets that you could technically run. Uh, I don't think this is going to be the best one, but I did have this concept a while ago. Uh, bulk up Flame Charge, Leech Life, and uh, Close Combat <laughs> with like leftovers is technically something that you could do. Uh, and then just hit like, I don't know. Then I would think you'd run like a similar set to me, but you'd be like, you know, you hit 143, so you have to be draggable to plus one. But then you like max out HP and defense or something. Something like that, right? But no, uh, I think that because it like helps out rain teams quite a bit specifically um and they need like all the help that they can get and it also is like able to function under sun because it gets the protosynthesis boost there i think it's a solid b tier i would actually if i had to place it anywhere it'd be right there so it's like right in the middle of the road there are no absolutely unusable paradox mons in my opinion uh there are just some that are definitely better than the rest so that's my tier list um let's see any other, uh, could you do Choice Band or Scar for Slitherwing? Uh, yeah, you could do Choice Band for Slitherwing, but then you wouldn't want to run First Impression, in my opinion, because it's a lot harder to use it then. You get, like, one big hit, and then you're, like, gone. Just tear a bug in that if you want to do that, right? Uh, Scarf is also pretty decent. Um, Slitherwing is just Volcarona if it had Fighting Typing. Not gonna lie, Volk should learn Close Combat. True. But yeah, uh, that's gonna be it. For the tier list, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, you know, leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications. Uh, this will be linked in the description down below. Let me know what your tier list would be. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.